Hi. Uh, for those of you who are tuning in via, I guess, the VOD, my name's Adam. This is my stream. This is my channel. Normally, I do game dev on my game called Insignia. Today, I'm making a new game from scratch, so that's going to be exciting. Let's get straight to it. So, uh, I have been thinking a little bit about things. The jam theme is... You are not alone. Let's go to Leonardo and do some concepting. This is the only theme that we started thinking about concepts for uh, on Saturday or whenever it was. We uh, we had an idea, Cryptidae and I had an idea, basically like a, a, a dog. And the dog is like, it, it's lost in a forest and its master isn't around. And that's because its master is a, a ghost. You play as the recently deceased person and you're kind of like trying to lead the dog out of the forest. And so it's kind of like a lemmings style game where you're like interacting with parts of the environment to try to like get the dog, you know, keep the dog from being distracted and uh, get it out of there. So that was an idea. I, I've done a lot of these kind of sad traumatic stories in the past, so I might avoid it. I've had I've had a character be in prison. I've had a character be at a therapy session going through their past trauma. I've had a character lose their memories and forget that they accidentally killed their wife. I've got a track record here of making some tragic games. Uh, so maybe we won't do that. There was, there was one that I was thinking of where it's like you alone as long as you stick together in this concept that I had it's kind of like taking throneless and pushing it into like a different space so you have like a prince and you have his like you have like a knight you'd have like an archer and you'd have like another another person I don't know who it would be somebody else Maybe a mage. And their job is to like lead the prince out of harm's way. The, what I wanted to do for this jam was to do some procedural generation. So like basically you have like a map and the map's different every time. Procedural terrain generation, I should say, not procedural, like not generative. So you've got like the starting place, which is like a ruins of a kingdom or whatever. That's like all broken down. And then you have another place where you're trying to get to, which is like, I don't know, a safe haven. And the map is a series of pathways. And the way that it works is that along the way, you, you kind of like, you send the prince down the paths. And as you go along the way, you get like ambushed by different like enemies. <laughs> basically equivalents of the of, of your heroes and basically like it's the same kind of concept as throneless where in throneless you were trying to recruit it's a similar thing where you're trying to like do almost like map control so it's it's almost like an rts so you're sending your main party down the road and as you do it you have to sort of like send some away to go scout ahead to go claim uh other like safe ha like safe houses and stuff so you're trying to like rally the kingdom a little bit because when you claim these uh like other towns or whatever you get rewarded by adding more members to the party so it's like risk reward but like you have to you have to send party members away to go and build the party but as you do that you leave the party weak and then if you happen to get ambushed along the road you risk losing the whole thing you can click on them and tell them to go somewhere and they'll auto path their way to wherever you're trying to go you can you can sort of like place the units around the king and they'll take that formation so they will just you know figure out where they need to be and they'll just follow along they'll walk in the same direction you walk if you get more knights or whatever you can place them around and if an enemy gets within within range, they start attacking each other. And all you have to do is like make sure the king doesn't die. I'm wondering if I want it to be all in the same space, 
And I'm wondering, like, if the micro level stuff, like the battle stuff, when you're getting closer, would be better off tackled. Like, is this two views? Is it like this view and then this view? And you can drag them that way. That would be the trick, wouldn't it? How do you manage the, the separate parties? What would be interesting? Uh, yeah, basically what I'll do is give them behaviors. Just like I use for Insignia and for the, what I was using for Throneless. Oh, I'm definitely making the exact same mistake as last time uh, when I did Throneless with Scope. It's, it's already huge, but... <laughs> What can I say? What can I say? This is what I like to do. MVP for this is a world. Extra viable product is generated world. We're probably gonna end up doing this. Mechanics, what's MVP for this? Basically all of it, right? Like I can't really split this out into anything more different. Okay, uh, so graphics. So something like this would be really cool, I think. Uh, I don't know if, if we go like really, really lo-fi or we can actually, we, I think we could go higher than this. Um, I don't think this is necessarily to our betterment. <laughs> uh, I, I think that there's a point here where if we get too granular, we lose out on the ability to showcase my animation skills and just other art style stuff. What could work here though, is that we could do more interesting stuff with the procedural world gen. So like if, you know, if we can handle all of this as just like a shader, when I say like do it all with a shader, I mostly mean the terrain elevations and stuff. Like I, I'm just thinking about how we would get this behaving like a world if we wanted to do generative stuff. So one of my favorite games of all time is called Disciples. And it really reminds me of this. So what's really cool about this is that you've got different places around the map and you send parties to those places to secure them. And then you can generate more people from them. So it's kind of, you know, it's, it's really the same concept, except this is turn-based. Uh, and it's very, very slow. It's like turn-based strategy, very heroes of might and magic. And it's not, there's no, the combat doesn't happen on the map. The combat happens in like a battle thing. Whereas what I love about Kingdom is it is, it is real time and the units kind of just do their own thing. I like how hands off this is. And I like how, I like the gameplay loop of this at the macro scale. I like the way that you kind of like, you plan out, I'm going to go and take that village and then we're going to build it up and then we're going to go and take the enemies keep, you know, and you sort of like have this investment in the people that you build. And I love that. I love that investment. So I want to do that in the long term. The immediate gameplay loop is what I'm kind of more interested in right now because I feel like that's where the that's where things are a little more who knows a little more up in the air. So this situation with like parties and like how to separate them and bring them together and make them you know is there a maximum party size and then the AI that's the core of this game. I think I can do this. I can make this game, is what I'm trying to say. This is going to be called something like that. It could be called Prince of Pilgrims. Now you may think, Adam, isn't this too early to be thinking of names? I say no. So, character uh, state machine. All right. Previously, what, what I've done in Insignia is I've put like a properties variable in here and then I've created a little struct that's like a little packet 
that you pass in the parameters through. But I feel like that's just too much work. Uh, whereas I could just like, you know, prep the call by just saying, setting up the properties that I want to set up. Or even, you know, maybe I've got a thing called setup. And then I just pass the destination in there. Okay, first attempt. Fail. Hey, hey, hey. Character that can walk. King is yellow. So, character's leader is. Yeah, this is. We'll call this guy Servant. Cool. So now if I take the prince and I move him around, yay! The ally follows. So the next thing that I want to do, what else do we have? We've got a bunch of stuff here we've done. Okay, so uh, we've got navigate, we've got idle, we've got follow. I mean, walk is part of that. I think I'll take that off the basic state machine for now. Cool, so now check it out. Ding, tick, we did it. When is this supposed to be done by? I was supposed to be starting this at 8 p.m. <laughs> Up two hours ahead of schedule. Look at this. And I actually prefer this state machine to Insignia's, <laughs> to be honest with you guys. Yeah, this is uh, this is Figma. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. It's a bunch of it's a bunch of frames with some rounded corners and nice colors. So we are kind of ahead of schedule, which is great. So we're going to do parties and grouping now. Okay, so what is the part? It's got a public. How do I, how do I want to do this? I guess it's like a list of it's a it's a it's a dictionary character list character called parties uh there should be a hash set of characters the other thing i want to do here is make sure that i can't have characters in two parties so, uh, nice. So, uh, now we should be able to bring this back here. I should be committing to Git. I should be committing to Git. Adds <laughs> so many things. That was probably a little bit of a, it's probably a little overdue that one. <laughs> And now what I'd like to do is try something else, a second team. Okay, so we have a team of five. If I just uh, make like, I guess another prince and then set these guys as leader to the, this prince and then take these guys, I guess, yeah, that's already doing it, right? That's a team. So now we're going to start doing controls. Uh, let me just see if this, if my thing that I was supposed to be doing is, is, um, is on track. So uh, I have leaders, I have followers, I have the data structure, the data structure, data structure. I don't have splitting, but I do have merging. So yeah, deaths and promotion. That's the next one. So in this case, it's like, maybe we don't assign a new leader. Oh, that's interesting. So right now, I've been thinking like, oh, I'll have like a, the party's instructions will be owned by the leader. But if the leader dies, what happens to those instructions? Does everyone just flee? Does the leader pass on his instructions to the next in command? I guess so. That kind of seems right. Let's do that. We now have deaths and promotion done. Auto merge. I don't know, but I think that's an input thing. Okay, so input time. Let's uh, let's commit this and say adds control. Oh, that's not how you spell that. Adds control. Adds mm, basic party manager and functions. Cool. 
Cool. Okay, input time. So. Input manager, I guess. What's your job? You need to be able to select units. That's basically it. You just drag them where you want them to go. We could do like click, like left click, right click kind of thing, or have like a selection. I wonder if dragging is the way to do it. <coughs> UI for dragging. Let's, uh, I think I know what I want that to look like. I think what it is, is there's a little dude, right? He's like standing there. And then you get like a dotted line that's like tick 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 for where you're trying to take him. That's pretty good. Makes pretty good sense. The only thing I'm a bit afraid of is what happens if the thing you're trying to attack is like way out there somewhere. You have to constantly be micromanaging them and saying, okay, first go over here, then go over there. Unless you can like zoom out. Yeah, I mean dragging to the border is pretty obvious. But it might, the scrolling might just be a bit weird. Depending on how big the game is, maybe it's not, maybe it's never going to be big enough that it's too disorienting. So anyway, uh, I still need to create this. So I'm going to do that. Uh, I don't think I've ever drawn something along a spline before. I guess I could draw just a bunch of sprites in a line separated by a certain amount. For now, let's just draw a line. It doesn't need to be. We could just even draw it as a gizmo. Okay. Okay. Nice. Oh, I could do this. Uh, we need a public animation curve. And it's just going to look like that. Selection curve dot evaluate T. Oh, first try. Holy shit. First tricky try. Just for you, we're going to do the dotted segment. <laughs> Pretty good. I like it. I think <laughs> I think if it looked like this in game, I'd be happy. Okay. Uh, good. That's dispatch done. I should be able to test it now. <laughs> oh shit! They dancing. <laughs> All right, nice. Uh, so now we can just say set idle for now. Ding, 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 Very good. Very robust. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. This doesn't work. Argument cannot be no. <gasps> they're friends now. Now they're on the same team. Okay, you, 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 and you, you're going to join them, and then you're going to join them, you're going to join them. Now the only thing is I can't right now jump straight to a new team from an old team, but that's what I want to be able to do. So let's do that. Does that include uh, that one? Oh, that's so good. Dude, it's so creepy when this guy starts moving because I don't know what he's actually moving towards. Like, he's just moving on his own, dude. I honestly don't know what this is. I don't know why it was moving on its own. What the heck, man? Why does it decide to move sometimes? <laughs> it's so scary. <clears throat> so the next thing is when... I, I don't currently have a facing direction. 
I'm thinking of doing one. Basically what it is, is like these guys are now in a party with this guy. This is the leader. If the leader decides to go over this way, I want these two to follow him. And I don't know if I want them to follow him in formation or to just follow in general. So this becomes check. This becomes check. So basically I have today is core mechanics of uh, state machines, parties and grouping and input. Tomorrow it's enemy AI and combat. The next day it's the core game loop. So getting the game functional by Wednesday where you can actually like do the game. You know, characters are walking around trying to complete objectives, etc. And then Wednesday, Thursday, it's just production values, art mostly, getting it looking really pretty. Friday is like, yeah, you know, start the game from the title screen, have you be able to play through it, finish the game, win condition, lose condition, blah, blah, blah. Then there's like level design stuff. Saturday is more juice. And then Saturday night, Sunday morning is music, sound effects. So we've done everything that we said we would do today. And it's not even 10 o'clock yet. So right now I've got a walk, I've got a patrol, I've got an idle. All of the code that's driving this is custom as of six hours ago. This is the state class. This is the state machine class. And then, you know, walk is it inherits from state and it just has some stuff that it does. This is a basically a rewrite of the system that I use for Insignia. If you want to see how that system works, check out my YouTube channel. I have two videos about behavior trees and an editor that I built for Insignia to actually monitor those trees. But I'm not using that here because it's they're not quite the same system, but they're pretty much the same. So this is looking great. Working on this tomorrow, same time, same place. Let's find someone to raid and get out of here. I um, made such good progress yesterday. Things came together so quickly and uh, we were like two hours ahead of schedule at one point. Now we're on schedule. So uh, I'm not gonna waste much time. I'm gonna get straight into it and just give you a quick recap of what we built. Basically, <laughs> what we're doing is we're building this game. It's called Prince of Pilgrims or the Pilgrim Prince, one of the two. Uh, the theme for the gem is you're not alone. And the way that we're kind of making this work is we're taking the throneless concept where you start as a prince or a king and you try to recruit uh, a party, but this is gonna have a much more directed kind of like scenario where your city, your town has been destroyed and you have to cross the land to the nearest allied kingdom. As you're traversing the terrain, you're being assaulted by uh, wayward enemies and uh, vagabonds. And along the way, you can increase your party size by visiting uh, towns and claiming them. And uh, yeah, increasing increasing your uh, recruitment. In addition to this, you have the power to send units in your party away to go and do some of that for you. So you have to, it's kind of like a risk reward balance of like sending party units away while keeping a strong base around the prince as you make your way to the end. So you have to stick together or you, uh, you know, increase the chance of dying. So, uh, we have a few mechanics that we've already decided on now, working on the next thing, which is more of the NPC AI, including battles. So we're getting, getting combat into the game, and also missions. Missions and battles are like today's thing. If I press play, something happens, looks good. If we turn gizmos on, we can see how the grouping system works. Basically, we have a bunch of characters, they're doing whatever they want. We can make them go in different directions. And if we pull them away from their party, the party gets smaller. Now they're all in their own parties. So I can drag this guy here. Now these two are in a, in a group. I can drag this guy in as well. Now they're all in a group. I can take the leader of this group and give him to somebody else. So now they're all elite, they're all under this group. And that's the first part of the, of the thing. That's like the core of the system where you have a group of people. What I don't have is proximity. So the way that I'd like to do this is have a little like circle expand out from the group leader so that you can sort of like get a bit more of a of a UI. I can also right click to slow the game down, which makes it a little bit easier to do this kind of stuff. We're all gonna be light pink. Now they're all part of light pink. So 
there's gonna be a behavior called follow where they're gonna hang out together, exactly. Right now, they don't do that, but it will be very soon. Yeah, partner. <laughs> well, doggy. For five minutes, we're gonna speak like this. We're gonna be making games and taking names. So, what we're gonna do right now is see if we can't get this uh, preview of the previous video that we created. Let's get this darn thing working. We gotta go ahead and open up Figma. Looking at Tuesday. And we got NPC AI, allies versus enemies, aggro, ambushes, invisible enemies near forests, team behaviors, ganging up, target prioritization, and spacing. So add concept of mission. That's what we're doing right now. Concept of mission. Okay, so let's think about it for a second. When you're thinking about behavior, almost running out of time for this accent, so we gotta get back into doing some actual thinking. What does a mission look like? We got a character and PC, and they got behaviors like walk and walk and talk and attack. You could you could make a decision to guard someone on the way to completing your mission. Right? So guard could fall under. In fact, everything that you can do from like a behavior perspective could be justified by doing one or one thing or another. So the justification for why we're doing what we're doing, can that be encapsulated essentially with a uh, single state at the top or something like that? Is the, is the tree of behaviors enough to contain the entire thing? I reckon maybe if you got two characters, right? You got like, or like, let's just hypothetically, you got an angel and you got yourself a knight. The way that an angel might get to the castle is they fly. The way a knight might get there is walk or even ride. So if that is what we're doing, then you can't describe getting to the castle. Castle? Castle. Getting to the castle. You can't describe getting to the castle as the behaviors. You can't say walk. If you're an angel trying to get there, you ain't gonna walk. You're gonna navigate, but you ain't gonna walk. We could make this more abstract and just say navigate. Maybe this is fine. Maybe it's totally fine. Castell, Faber Castell. <laughs> Love those pencils. All right, now that's enough of that. I That's gonna be really hard to explain in the VOD. I love this convention. I, I feel like this, this is like the most beautiful thing in C-Sharp. If O is character C, it's like I am identifying something and giving it a name. If Strata is Elendil Aragorn, then add characters Aragorn. It's amazing, it's my favorite thing. Yay, you can go, you can go there. This? Have I not? Oh, I didn't give it. Oh, I didn't give it the variable. I didn't give it the variable, pals. Yeah, it needs the walk to navigate. Otherwise, it doesn't know how to do what it's doing. Boom. Okay. Go, 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 go. Yay! He converted the castle. Now the castle is white. So, um, what is the next thing that I need? Wait, what is the next thing? Concept of mission. I, d I don't really have a concept of a mission. Okay, let's try that. Let's try doing that. A mission is a list of state. Oh, this is 
so powerful. I think I've just figured this out. Mission, these are your objectives. Why didn't I think about this ever? This is great. So you can do a bunch of things in a sequence. So the mission could be something like, go here, attack this castle, and then come back. All right, so now I can have a mission which has a series of objectives. If any of the objectives fails, then the mission fails. Like if I'm trying to, let's just say my mission is to save the damsel. Well, the first thing I want to do is like, well, I'm trying to get to the tower where the damsel is. If I can't get, if I try to walk somewhere and then my path is blocked, I don't just give up. I go, well, is there another path or can I path find? I do the most, the next most abstract thing I can to see if I can do something else. And then if I hit the top of that tree and there's nothing I can do to proceed, then I would bail. I think a list of instructions is still important here. I'll make these all mandatory, assumes mandatory. Now, what happens if the task is completed before you actually get there and you get there and it's already done? Does that mean you failed? Okay, this is good. Updates die to be more secure. I think at this stage, it's becoming a little too abstract what I'm talking about and what I'm designing. It's, I'm like, I'm too far away from the gameplay. So why don't we take a break, come back, do combat, and then that's a little bit more immediate than objectives and missions. So we'll do the combat and then we'll have reasons to create more advanced behaviors beyond things like objectives. Because right now missions, the point of a mission as a behavior is there to allow the, the, the NPC to deal with an enemy and then continue on with their mission and then return back to the party. And so before we have any of that stuff, we can't really test the higher order stuff. So let's keep, keep it granular and work towards it. Let's take this and swap it so that we do actual combat first. So uh, I'm just gonna focus now for a bit. Quiet time. So then executive function or like, what do we call intention? State called intention, duty. Ah, that's a good one. Let's just do attack. Let's just let's just get engaged in there, and we'll figure this out later. I think it, I think this needs a target. Let's just assume that engaging means there is a target. For okay, I guess it's like go and check through the entire party for anyone who happens to be being attacked by someone. Attack them well the first thing i want to do is check to see if i'm being attacked and the only way that i know if i'm being attacked is if i know that someone's targeting me or if i got hit by somebody recently and the last one is much much easier to do so i'll just save that the only other thing we can do is like maintain oak trees stuff like that I think at this stage, you know, it might as well just have every single character in the game be in a list and just check that list every time. It's the dumb way, but it's just the way that it is. I'm doing okay, I'm just focusing. I've been writing a lot without being able to get much results. So I'm just like, honestly, when I press play, hopefully we're gonna be able to have like archers and knights and like, it's gonna be like the whole, <laughs> basically describing the entire combat system right now. It's kind of exactly this is what I need, but I'll get to it line segments 
I know, all I've done is seize code since I came here. <laughs> One second, hang on, hang on. Times speed. It's kind of linear, but who cares. Let's just uh, leave that for a second and see what we can get up to. There's gonna be so much stuff broken. I haven't typed, I haven't pressed play on my game for like two hours, two and a half hours. And I've written, literally. I've done this, I've done this, I've done, uh, I haven't done any of that. Oh, well, I guess that's all I've done. <laughs> Hang on, let me make this better. Ranged attacks, projectiles. Oh, look at this. Melee attacks. No, you should be pressing play as often as possible. The issue here is that the systems that I'm building are too... I mean, I probably could have just done the melee characters first and then the range characters, but I kind of just like felt like every time I, for me to press play, I needed to do the next thing. And then I needed to do the thing that that involved. And then the thing that that involved, it was just like, you know, nested distractions. So now we're gonna start unraveling it slowly uh, and testing it. Let's just do a quick commit. I mean, I don't even, <laughs> we'll see what happens. <laughs> okay. Now is the first time I've actually been able to separate my subjects into archers and stuff. Uh, so we go to prefabs. There it is, archer. Archer has states. So, uh, tech. Okay. Power. One is fine. Range. Two. Accuracy one, literally just give me like a square for now. That'll do. Point one, point oh one, uh, point two. Look at that, it's an arrow. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> Speed four, arc, parabola. Close enough. What's next? Archer needs an engage. That can sit at the top of combat states. So bow attack is an attack. Cool. Aggro range is, say three. The bow attack is two, so that's pretty good. Uh, okay. And then we need a spacing behavior. This is what I mean. Like, it's like, oh, I can't press play. I can't make the archer do his thing if he doesn't know how to get in place. I guess I probably could've just made him attack all the time, but it just isn't gonna be what I want it to be. So let's just do it. So if they're too close, get away. If they're not too close, go forward. Uh, right now, I'm just moving at a normal speed. I'm not gonna increase the speed if they're closer or further. So I'm not, I'm not, this isn't me doing the flocking part. This is doing the pre-flocking part where they're just dumb people and they just move at their speed. If the target, I'm getting starting to get tired. If the target is dead, then target's null, find next target. If it's still null, then we finish and we get out of there. Otherwise, if, if either they're not dead or this didn't close, then we just say, if we were spacing and we succeeded and we're in range, do the attack. Otherwise, just space again. Just keep doing it. Okay, now we have something that might work. Holy balls. This was ridiculous. I started so well. And the knight is gonna have some different states. Create empty, this is combat states. Let's make two knights attack each other. Just a bit of a little debugger there. Oh, look at him. Combat states. Engage, space, walk. He's doing it. He's approaching for the attack. He gets really close and then they kiss. Okay, well at least we know that he's trying to, he's doing the thing that I told him to do. 
And that's all I can ask of him as my son. Okay, still no good. Target is, distance is greater than min range and distance is less than max range. Success is true, complete, made it. Debug.log. Ah, the attack doesn't have a range. Well, that would be the issue, wouldn't it? The range is 0.2. Oh, the attack actually happened. Oh, cool. It's actually doing it. Now, let's make this a little more interesting. Yeah, you multiply a vector by one, by negative one, it goes back the other direction. A vector dot normalized times knock back. Now we can push them every time we attack. We can see something happen. Get him. Oh, ho, 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 ho. now we're seeing something. And he's chasing him down. Exactly. First successful combat engage. So the next thing I want to do is add the archers, I think. Yay! Yay! <laughs> okay. Projectiles in the game. So what I do is my state machine is actually a tree. The tree always runs down the branch. When its state finishes, its parent state is the one that determines what happens next. What's the purpose of the groups? To follow the leader or engage combat as a group? The groups are there to... Uh, basically they're parties. They're like RPG parties. So the point of the group is to essentially you as the player are like the, I guess, God or whatever, and you're forming groups and then dispatching them off to do things. And you're doing that by just dragging them closer together. Run away. They're going to get you. They don't have tracking on yet. So they <laughs> I'm dancing. I'm dancing. Ooh, what happens if I put one against the other? Archer wins. This is going to be so cool once they aggro. Okay. Uh, I need to do it now, don't I? Let's check the sketch. Okay, now we have this and this done. We have all the combat AI pretty much done. So we can say, check, check. That was my budget for tonight. There's a, there is a bit more work. It's, it's kind of in, it's just like more time that I need to spend on <coughs> uh, the game loop which I guess is just what this is, that's tomorrow. Hey, they're doing it. Knights win. Oh, the archers are gonna get destroyed. Are they even gonna take one? They've got one. They got two. They miss. 
Oh, they almost went even. That's actually kind of balanced. Did we get allies versus enemies? Yes. Did we get aggro? Yes. Patrol? Yes. Ambushes? Mm, we don't have this yet. But we'll move it. Target prioritization? Yep. Spacing? Yep. Will I add pathfinding? Yeah, I, I, I have... I have a dungeon system and an A star implementation that I can use that I haven't really integrated or thought about much about at all, but this is my ad hoc sort of dungeon generator system. So the idea, what I'm thinking of doing is there's a game called Disciples, which I really like. And the way it works is it has pathways and the pathways, are like there's just like terrain, right? And the terrain has weights. So what I would do is I would implement the level generator based on this, where these rainbow paths are like footpaths, like roads. And off the roads, it's a little bit more expensive to walk and then there would be rivers and things where you can't walk at all. And so I would let the AI figure it out. Like it would have an overall goal. You know, I can tell the prince, okay, you're gonna go over to this stronghold and they would start moving their way. And um, the battles that happen al along the way um, will just be the way they were, the way you're watching them just now. But then after that, then they'll resume walking along the path or trying to get from A to B or whatever it is they want to do. Uh, I, I'm i not sure how much micro I want the game to have. I don't know if it's just like set it up at the start of a day, let the characters play it out, and then at the end of the day, try to adjust or whatever. I don't know. I have to decide that tomorrow. That's the hardest part, I think. Is like turning this into a game. We're gonna get there, pals. We're gonna get there. Thank you so much for checking out the stream today. I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. As always, I've been Adam. You've been the Pixel Pals. This has been the Indie Tales Game Dev live stream. And until next time. Hey, pal. Thanks for watching. And thanks most especially to the patrons and Twitch subs who support this channel and my game dev project, Insignia. To find out more, click the links in the description below. And uh, if you like this video, tell YouTube by clicking the like button, and then YouTube will tell me and then I'll make more videos. That's nice. Thanks again, and uh, until next time.